Hello and welcome and thank you for joining me. Today we're going to talk about flow orchestration and I'm going to walk you through an example or a use case that I have learned so far. I'm not going to say I know everything about flow orchestration, but I just wanted to share what I've learned so far and um, something that you can apply in your org as well if you have use cases. So in this use case, first of all, flow orchestration, you have to have all the flows that you need to orchestrate first. So maybe your org already has those complicated flows on the same objects during throughout the different business steps. So for example, of one of the common use cases, an account gets created on the creation, there is an email that gets sent out to someone to kind of fix some of the bad data quality on account. So once the data gets fixed, then there is an opportunity, maybe there's an account triggered flow that creates an opportunity. So, but what you want to do is you don't want to create the opportunity right away. You only want to create the opportunity after somebody actually enriches that account stays. So if the revenue is less than 50,000, I want the stays to be prospecting. If it's greater than 50,000, it's qualification. So let's assume that you already have all those flows. So in the first case, you have a screen flow that this person is going in and filling in the values just to make it easier. And then in the second one, there is a subflow. All right, let's create the new flow orchestration here. So create new flow and we're gonna choose the orchestration template. So going here to all plus templates, you can see here flow orchestration is in beta and I'm gonna choose record triggered orchestration. Click next. And here's very familiar UI for flow. So I'm just gonna edit and save an object. So for me, it's the account because that's my starting point. A record is created, I'm gonna say, um, Actually, record is created or updated for this scenario. I'm going to leave the condition requirements to none, but in your case, maybe there's a requirement where you want to have certain conditions. That's totally fine. In fact, I highly recommend doing that. And then save. Let's just give it a name. Count flow orchestration. Okay. So once we have that, you can go back to elements. This kind of is really weird. I have to double select this. Uh, let's take a look at stage and decision here. So there are two things. Um, once you select stage, stage is like a collection of steps and decision actually create paths for orchestration of the flow. So like if I select stage, stage just means it's a collection of steps. So I'm just gonna say first stage is um, account validation, for example. And that will basically include all the things related to that. Let me just exit out of that so it auto populates the API name. Okay. Account validation, and you can say what's the exit condition. The exit condition can either be when all the steps have been completed, and I'll show you what you can add in all the steps. But when the specified evaluation flow returns true, that's another way to do it. So I'm just going to leave it as that. And then once you're here, then you can select different things that may happen within that stage. It can be a background step or it can be interactive step. So interactive step is usually means the screen flow element. So background step can, for example, there can be one background step saying, you know, when the account is created, I want to notify the data team so they can get an email and then they can click on the link, which takes them directly to the account page, and then they can further uh, complete their steps. So this is where you can search flow. Now I want to point out what I have noticed at least is that it only lets you search for um, subflow for some reason. It doesn't let you select flow so you may have to convert your flow to a subflow if you want to use this. This is something I've noticed. I don't have a flow for that email callout so I'm just going to leave that but this is where you do that if that's the case. And when the state starts, the step starts. That's one option. We can also say if it another step is marked complete, then this step can start. Um, so I'm not going to do the background because I don't have a subflow for that. So I'm just going to exit out of it and delete it. You can delete it pretty easily. Now the next step for me is somebody actually goes in and updates the field values. So I'm just going to say update account fields. And these are critical account fields like annual revenue, um, number of employees, and so on. So for me, I have a flow for that. Account, update account values. That's the flow that I created. It's a screen flow. And 
record ID, you can pass it. So just like any of the flows, you will have those flow record uh, record dot available to you. Because we are triggering this on the creation of account, you'll have all the account fields available. It's like record dot ID. I'm also using var account for something, so I'm just going to pass record. That's it. And the reason I'm seeing these two here is because on, in my screen flow, I have these two variables set as accept input values, which is why I'm seeing this here. If that was not the case, then you may not see these values. It depends on your flow, really. So if I record page is where they would actually go in and fulfill complete those steps. So for me, it's, they have to go to that account page. So I'm just going to pass the record dot account again. And I'll show you what that means in a second. Um, so that's record dot account and username. And this is, um, it, for now, we're just going to keep it simple. But usually this is who the assigned user will be who can complete that step. So when the user logs in, they will see those steps on their page. So for me, I'm just going to say um, account dot owner ID or owner email. Um, so if I just ownership owner ID dot username. It has to be username, it, it doesn't have, it's not ID, it's username. I was making that mistake. Um, and then basically when the assigned user has completed the screen flow, this will be, this step will be marked as complete. So that's the first step. We're only in the first step. So that's the first stage complete. So you may have multiple steps within the stage. For me, it's just that stage. Now what I want to do is after the stage is complete, I want to have decision paths here and annual revenue because I want to create opportunities based on the revenue uh, number. So here you can say revenue is less than 50K and you can just use the resource um, of account, record.account annual revenue. So I'm just gonna search for that. Annual revenue less than 50,000. That's one condition. Um, next condition is revenue is greater than or equal. Now we can see here you have options. So what happens if the revenue is less than 50,000? You can add more elements in here. So by default, Salesforce will create stage one, two, three, but you can rename those. So for here, for the first one, what I want to do is create op one, let's just call it that. And create op one is the first stage. And then here, another stage will be create op two. Okay, so you can't really add step without creating stage, which is why we're creating stage first. So I, I just created two stages here. Now I can add steps. In steps, you can add what we talked about is the background or interactive. In this case, it's a background step because I do have a flow to do that. So <clears throat> stage, um, so for 50,000 less, I'm just gonna create opportunity with stage of prospecting. That is just my use case that we talked about. So. When the stage starts, step starts is good. And I only have one subflow that I can use. And um, I can actually pass account revenue because for me, the amount of opportunity should be equal to account revenue. So that's what I'm going to do. Record dot annual revenue. And stage is, I'm going to hard code it here, prospecting because we talked about that's the stage, that's the requirement. And record ID, I think it's the account ID that I need. So I'm gonna pass that as well. Account ID. And that's pretty much all I need for this one. So I'm creating an opportunity prospecting. Is there a way I can copy this? 
select elements. Okay, it doesn't appear that we can copy this. All right, so this is all for now. And then step, step two or stage two will be the same thing. I would want to do create opportunity, whatever type I want there, stage. So I'm just gonna save that. And I want to show you one important point um, to actually see the steps. So you have to go to your page where you want the users to go to. So for example, in this case, it's the account page. There's a work guide beta component that you need to pop up on your page. It is just a new component, Flow Orchestrator Work Guide. So all you need to do is drag and drop on the screen. So as soon as the user has an assigned step, they will see that on their screen. That's about it. Now let's see how. Let me make sure the flow is actually active. So I'm just going to activate this. Okay. And let's go back to the account. So first I'll create a new account. That's one, two, three, four. Okay. And I'm just gonna leave everything empty. Save it. And after it's saved, you should see a work guide. So because my screen element or screen flow has all these fields, I'm able to see that flow right here on the screen. So I'm just gonna populate these values, annual revenue, let's make it less than 50,000, 40,000, and that's all I want to do at this point. So hit next, the moment I hit next, the account gets saved. Um, if I go back to details, you should see, let me refresh the screen. So I did some further troubleshooting into the issue on why the opportunity did not get created. And it appears the reason was the annual revenue here is being sent from the record dot. So basically what you need to keep in mind is this record dot, if you are using a flow orchestration, is the value of annual revenue at the time of creation of account. So let's say if somebody created the account with annual revenue of 45,000, then it will be passed over and the opportunity will be created. But if somebody edits the account, this does not get reflected. So you won't have the latest annual revenue. So obviously this is not the best use case for this type of scenario. You have to query that annual revenue and then pass it. That's another way to do it. But we just can't pass it annual revenue and expect that the latest value will be populated. Okay, so so in case for testing this one, what I'm gonna do error, and by the way, you will see an error if the flow fail for some reason. In my case, I got the flow failure because it did not find the annual revenue since I updated it after the fact, and the account amount is a required field and opportunity, so I got this error message, which is really neat that it gives you the error email so you are able to troubleshoot. Another thing, the moment the flow is assigned to you, you will also get an action item assignment email, which is also super handy so that if an account is created for account update fields, uh, somebody will get the email so that they know that they have been assigned an item and they can go to that record directly from here. Okay, let's go back and try to create an account. So I'm going to say this new account here. Okay, so this time I'm gonna actually have annual revenue here. And I still need to complete the action because after this action only, the next of the stages will be uh, working in the background. So for this case, I'm just gonna populate some other values. ERP ID, employee number, and that's it. So I'm just gonna hit next. That means this step was completed in our flow orchestrator. So now the opportunity should be populated if I refresh the screen, or I don't even need to refresh. So I have the prospecting stage opportunity, which is created with the amount of 40,000 because that was the revenue and the stage is prospecting because that's what we added in the orchestration. So now let's take a look real quickly on the orchestration again and some of the flows that we used here. The modified date sorting here. So here is the screen flow. So you're aware what's being used. 
and why we're seeing those values on the screen element. So it's a really simple screen element. So I'm just updating few values and I use the beta feature um, by using the fields directly on the var account. So I was able to pull some fields there, but it does not support currency, which is why I had to create another account and more revenue, separate currency, just like any screen element. And then I'm creating or updating the accounts right here. And the record ID is being passed to the orchestration, which is why we are able to update that account. And then the another flow that we use is opportunity subflow, which is creating opportunity by certain values. So assignment here, we are doing account ID, record ID, that's what we passed. Close date is current date, amount is an account revenue. Stage, op stage is what's being passed. And name is also by account name, which is also being passed from the orchestration. So that's what creates the opportunity. And that's pretty much all the flows. So in order to do the flow orchestration, you definitely need the flows ahead of time. You want to really define and do some mind maps on where you want to use those. And maybe this, this does not fit your use case. Um, so really keeping all those things in mind. Um, I hope this was helpful and learning experience for you as well. Please let me know if you have use cases so I can make videos.